Hot tent camping has become increasingly popular in the last few years. Central to hot tent camping is a wood-burning hot tent stove. Now, these stoves were very heavy when they first came out, and they become lighter over time. So that models are available now that are suitable for backpackers. Most of the models are available in stainless steel or now in titanium as well. Generally speaking, the designs are limited to just a few different designs, one or two of which I think are rather flimsy. Uh, some of them are earlier models, not necessarily as well thought out as you'd want them to be, lots of bits to lose, for example. But over time, they've been becoming better and better. Uh, the number of designs available are limited uh, in some measure, which makes me suspect that a number of factories are producing the same stove tent for different brands and simply putting a different logo on once they're manufactured. However, uh, there is an exception to this. Uh, Nature Hike have come up with a titanium stove tent. Unusually, there's no steel version of this one, so you can only get the titanium one. This one kind of intrigued me. So I went online, as one does, as perhaps you are doing now, to have a look at a review and see if it was any good. Unfortunately, there were no reviews. There was one assembly video made uh, in China about three years ago, which had, I think, seven or eight views on it. Uh, and I could find the uh, promotional video from the site that was selling it on AliExpress. And beyond that, there were no other videos I could find, no reviews that I could find. So it was a bit of a risk. But it looked like an interesting design. It looks like it could be a very good design. And so I took a punt and managed to acquire one. And uh, here we go. I'm going to be taking this out of its box we're going to assemble it and then in the later part of the video we're going to give it its first burn-in and finally we'll come up with an initial assessment on this the very first review video of the nature hike camping wood stove stay tuned So it comes in a rather nice padded Fedora case, zips on one end, and the whole unit is nicely self-contained. This is everything. Uh, the concertina is open and contains inside of it the front and back panel, as well as the stove pipe assembly. Uh, this side with the circle on top, that hole is for the chimney pipe, and so that's the back of the stove, the other end being the front. And when assembling it, I found, having had a little bit of a practice, that it's best to start with the back end which has the solid panel. Now there's a little bit of a bar here and sort of a hook here so that hooks on and then you have these two sliders and there's a keyhole shape on either side here for the sliders to fit in. It's important to try and get this as straight sided as possible but you hook on the base and everything inside. Now the two sliders need to be in the central position and then slid out and they're on a simple screw mechanism so you give it a couple of clockwise turns and um, that tightens it up. It doesn't have to be more than lightly finger tight and that's the back. If I flip this over we're now ready to put the front panel on and it works in the same way. You have a little notch here to catch onto this bar here, and then you have two keyhole shapes with which these two bits go into. And if I 
Use that in again, you need to be central, slip out, and then a quick little bit of clockwise turn. And if it's freewheeling, you just only have to touch the inner nut and it's very easy to tighten that. And as you can see the door on this, you have a wooden knob which is to make it possible to open this up to feed more fuel in without having to worry too much about that knob being too hot. And it's a very simple latch. Also, at the base of the door, now this is metal, so you would need to probably wear a glove or use an implement to move this, but this little slider opens and closes the front ventilation. So this is what lets air in uh, when it's burning. And of course, if you want to dampen the fire, just sliding it across a little bit will partially, if not completely, close that vent. Uh, I will tell you that this is held on with a simple nut and bolt assembly. You don't want it to be too tight or it won't slide, but if it feels too loose, you can just tighten it just a tad. Uh, it should be only just loose enough to slide open and close. And then you have this latch assembly. The bottom, as you can see, has folding legs. It has four. Uh, so when it's fully assembled, legs, it stands proud of the ground, so you don't have to worry about scorching the ground. And this brings us to the stovepipe assembly. To begin with, we have a dampener, which will fit onto here. There are three tongues with a groove that fit into the three holes surrounding the central hole. It pops in, and then a quarter turn, not even a quarter turn, less than that, and that's it, it's done. Uh, if I just hold this up for you, you can see that is the dampener. Even when fully closed, there is a gap around there, which is a, a safety thing to prevent an excessive buildup of carbon monoxide, even if you're trying to damp it right down. But this will allow you, by opening or closing the dampener, to control the airflow a little bit, that in conjunction with the front panel. So you can cause your fire to burn more slowly. This is especially useful if you are running your stove at night while you're trying to sleep uh, because you want that firewood to burn slowly otherwise you'll have to be refueling this thing probably every half hour uh, but you can slow it down by partially closing the damper uh, for the exhaust and perhaps partially closing the damper on the air inlet and that will reduce the amount of oxygen causing it to burn more slowly on the other hand, if you were cooking, you might want the dampener fully open and the front air inlet fully open, and that will let more air in. This will get nice and hot, and this surface you can cook on. I will point out that there are these X shapes on the top and the bottom. That embossed shape is actually to help try and prevent it from distorting too much, but as we all know, titanium does distort, especially titanium sheet metal, will distort a little bit when it's being used. But this is fairly stable, and although that might distort a little, I'm not sure how much, we'll find out. Uh, it does look, especially with these curves on the top and bottom, uh, it does look like it's going to hold its shape really well and be good to cook on, as well as keeping the tent heated up. Uh, contained in here, we have five spacers for the stovepipe. And this is the stovepipe. I'm not going to open it just yet because this has to be curled. Right now this is the short way. If it's opened lengthwise it's about two meters long and then it has to be curved, curled in the opposite direction. This needs to be done carefully partially because we have sharp edges here so I'll be wearing gloves and partially because we don't want to crinkle this. It's actually quite uh, a flexible material and this will eventually, I'm going to do it wrong now because I'm putting it inside that. Normally when it's done it'll go around the outside. These five spacers will help it hold its shape and when it's put away it also helps hold everything together. Uh, they would be spaced more or less evenly. At the very top of the stovepipe we would have this spark arrester. It has three tags that you can attach cordage to so that you can actually anchor it into place. You don't want to pull that tight, just loosely, uh, but that will prevent the wind from 
blowing the stovepipe around excessively. Also, it will prevent large sparks from flying out of the stovepipe. This is especially relevant uh, when you're burning your stove in a tent because any sparks that blow out could land on the tent and could burn a hole through. Obviously, uh, for those of you who don't know, this stovepipe goes through something called the stove jack, which is a heat proof panel on the tent that allows the stovepipe to exit the stove. Uh, one thing about the spark arrester is you have this outer circle, there's also an inner circle. And that inner circle is when you are actually putting the stovepipe on, uh, it would go in between those two to lock in. So it's actually quite secure. Right now I'm holding on to this material light because I'm keeping it tightly enough coiled to fit inside the inner circle. In fact, that needs to be tightened a little bit because it's just a bit wide now because I've let it go a little. But once it's placed in here, that's going to hold it in position. One thing I will say is the first time you take a titanium sheet and roll it into a stovepipe, it's going to fight you a little bit. Uh, but once you've actually burned it in and it's been exposed to high temperatures in the stovepipe configuration, it always goes back to that configuration with less, much less fuss and bother. So it does become easier, but the first time is a bit tricky, and I'll show you how I do that in a bit. Uh, when you are packing, basically that will just give you an impression, but except it'll be two meters tall. When you're packing it away, uh, again, you put everything together here so the entire stovepipe assembly is nested into itself. Close the legs. And by loosening these back to the center, the front panel pulls off very easily, flip it over, similarly go counterclockwise with just a quarter turn, half a turn, and then these will move to the center, and off it comes, and these more or less nest together, uh, not perfectly, but near enough. At this point, I would place these, this is going in face down with the wooden knob as far out as possible, and I'm going to place the stovepipe assembly in the bottom, in the center, obviously because this concertina is when it collapses down like an accordion, uh, it needs to be centered because the walls will squeeze inwards. But I'm also going to place this in person. This is going oops, and we want that on the top portion. So when it comes to is the center comes in and creates a top and a bottom portion. Stovepipe on the bottom, this on the top. And the only other thing is we need to make sure the stovepipe is pushed far enough back so the wooden knob uh, is not backing into it. Once this is down, it easily this out as well because we have an instruction manual. It does come with an instruction manual in multiple languages and that can be helpful if you get confused with it. And it goes to its place. As I say, this is a sort of a padded fedora, so it's actually really well made. But this is very typical of uh, Nature Hike products. I will say one of the reasons why I was willing to buy this, even though I wasn't able to see any other reviews, this being the first one being made on YouTube, um, is because I have other Nature Hike products. They don't sponsor me. I don't take any money from them. This is all purchased with my own money. But I have some of their products, and they are good quality, and that's why I was willing to take the risk. And, of course, we can just keep the instruction manual in there just in case. This then zips up. And it weighs very little, very compact, and this should prove a very effective bit of kit. In a moment, we'll have a look at assembling the stovepipe. Okay. 
Now, as a rule with these things, they always advise to get someone to help you. It's a two-person job. But I'm aware of the fact that not everyone has someone to help them when they're first doing this, so I'm going to do it as a one-handed job, or one-person job, I should say. And we're going to roll up this chimney pipe. And again, this is thin titanium sheet. It has some sharp edges. Gloves are a good idea. Uh, particularly since I'm doing this as a one-person job, I really want to be able to feel what I'm working with. Uh, so I'm just wearing vinyl surgical gloves because they're protecting my hands. Not as well as leather gloves would, but they do give me a lot more sensitivity. Uh, some of you may own something like this or have had something like this or can acquire something like this. This is a tube for a poster. It's empty now, but uh, you can use PVC piping or something like that. As long as you have some kind of a tube, I think you'll find that this job will be a lot easier. If you just try and roll it up without a tube, uh, you're more likely to crinkle the metal, and those crinkles can become permanent, and I wouldn't like that. So although I am... Uh, not using an assistant. I am using this to assist me. So if I take the spark arrestor off, and now we'll just unroll this, and it's a little bit like aluminum foil or something of that nature. Again, this is two meters long. going to want to recoil back into its short shape and I'm not crazy about that idea so <laughs> obviously whoops that's right in the way and this is what it wants to do Let's try that again that might work a bit better there we go so what we want to do is to roll this into a coil. Once it's actually been burned in, again, it'll return and want to actually roll up the long way as much as it currently just wants to roll up the short way. Uh, this is the effective heat on it. Now, I am actually using these two dumbbells on the end just to prevent it from rolling back up. And I'm going to use this in the center so that I can start to coil it without crinkling it. Uh, if you notice the spot where it is coming to a crinkle, just gently, already it's trying to bend excessively, so we're just going to use this to get it to start. Just get it to roll a little bit, hopefully without much of too many creases. It's going to have some creases. It's unavoidable. I'm going to end up with some. I'm just trying to minimize what's going on here. And I'm just going to slide this along as you can see. bit tight and perhaps slightly conical so it's a little narrower here a little wider there I'm using the narrowness to help me get these spaces on to begin with and I can already feel here I've got a sharp point there so you want to be careful about that uh, I'm going to slide my tube down a little and I'm going to Anymore. I'm just trying to keep it as uncrinkled as I could manage. And we start moving spaces down. And I can already feel, if I hadn't been wearing gloves, I would just cut my finger open there. So, yeah, definitely don't take it for granted. Do wear gloves. Pull that out now. This is something that 
it does not the first time I do it want to cooperate. But again, once you crinkle in here, don't panic, it's not the end of the world. Ow, wow. That ran right through the glove. And that's a nice little slice. So I'm going to be back in a moment. I'm going to put a plaster on this. Band-aid time. So uh, a few drops of super glue and a band-aid later I'm good as new. But if nothing else, this should serve to remind you that when I say something like, be careful of sharp edges, um, serious. These kinds of stove pipes are very typical in a lot of uh, wood stoves now for this kind of hiking. And that includes the steel ones as well as the titanium ones. And this edge is very, very thin. It is a little bit like a, uh, a knife edge. So you do have to be extremely careful with this. As I say, it's easier once it's been burned in and it's less prone to this kind of uh, danger, but it's still a little bit dangerous. So do pack gloves when you're hiking with this sort of thing. And I'm just gonna slide that up a bit further. middle and near the two ends we'll just and then in between and that gives us our stovepipe now I know uh, some people might just a little bit more in because that's the way we can fit uh, some people might be concerned about that bowing in that way, that's really not going to cause a problem. There's a lot of overlap here. Smoke will not escape out of the side of this. This will actually work extremely well. Uh, and by just adjusting it slightly, we can make the ends a little bit wider or a little narrower as necessary. Let's have a look at it, actually, how we would assemble onto the stove. Now, what I'm not going to do is put this on the stove right now because we're indoors and frankly the ceiling's too low. This pipe is two meters long. So while I could stand it up on the ground, it's about that far away from the ceiling right now. So if we have the extra height of the stove, it won't work. But what I will do is take the dampener off the stove and show you how it would fit on. Now again you can, in theory, get this on the inside of the dampener, but you don't want that, you want it on the outside. So if you have to slide that up a bit, let that uncurl just a tiny bit, and again, gloves on. Once that's around the outside, you can pull this band down much closer, and that's it. That's now nice and firm. If I want to bring it even closer still, I could even theoretically overlap. But I don't really want to do that. I want it to be just a few inches above. But although that can slip out, it won't go back in there. Well, it will, but tightly. But that's actually firm enough. So that will actually... I'm going to the ceiling now, so I can't really do it with the damper on. But uh, if I just give that a little adjust so that it's nice and even, that's actually nice and firm. And bear in mind, it's going through the stove jack, so it's going to be locked into position on the top of the stove. It's going to be held in place by the stove jack as it exits the tent. And of course, on the other end, and let's turn this around, on the other end we have the spark arrester. And if I actually use the three tie-out guys, uh, again, when you're tying out a guy on something like this, you don't pull the cordage tight. You want it to be just slightly slack. Not much, but slightly. 
so we can have a little bit of maneuvering movement, but not much. And that'll keep the wind at bay. But because it's going to be held down by this, held in position by the stove jack and by the stove, that slip fitting is actually firm enough. Uh, we'll get a better look at that when we take this outside and do our burning. Again, on the, uh, if I come up to the camera for a second and give you a bit more of a close up, uh, what you can see is you have an inner ring and the outer side. And what we want to do is actually fit the stove pipe in, underneath that inner ring. Uh, and that will really lock everything in place. And it will prevent it from sliding up to cover uh, any of the holes from the inside here. And so that's actually, as I say, it'll go in there. It'll hold it on firmly, but it won't actually cover any of that up because obviously we need that to allow the exhaust gases to escape. Now, okay, that's a little tight so we might want to just curl it a little tighter to get it to go in and then let it loosen. Once I have the outer lip in, I'll let that loosen a bit. And there we go. It's it's not very hard. It's just a little bit of a little but not much. So at the top, instead of having a big hole that sparks could fly out of, uh, we have this spark arrestor. Obviously, very tiny sparks can get out of there, but larger pieces of uh, spark cannot. Now, one of the things about tiny sparks that come out of a chimney is that the smaller the spark is, the less chance it has of hitting the ground or even the tent. A tiny spark has very little fuel to burn because what you're having is a piece of unburnt ash that, uh, or a piece of smoldering ash that's coming out and it's going to burn up in the out very, very quickly. Now a larger piece will stay glowing hot for several seconds and that might actually land on the tent and could cause a problem. If you have the spark arrestor on, that's not really going to happen because the larger sparks that could burn for long enough to hit the tent if they escape out of the top of the chimney, uh, those aren't going to get out of here. The only bits of spark that will escape from this will fall maybe halfway down towards the tent and then be burned out so that what might touch the outside of the tent is effectively a tiny bit of soot, but not actually a glowing ember. Uh, I suppose it's possible to burn the odd little tiny hole in your tent with a spark that does manage to get through, but that's very improbable. Uh, one thing I will say as well, another thing to be concerned about, is you do not want this to be too long. Two meters uh, for the tent that I have is fine. Uh, there are uh, versions of this that you can buy separately that are two and a half or even three meters in length. Um, you don't want one of those unless you have a very large, very tall tent. Uh, you really don't want more than perhaps um, perhaps a meter or thereabouts poking out. You would like this to go taller than the top of your tent, but you don't want it to go too high because apart from anything else, the wind could catch this and it could cause problems. So what we were trying to do is prevent the wind from being an issue. Uh, I take that off now. Here and here, and uh, we will reattach them when we take this outside and do our burning. I hope you found this video interesting and enlightening, and I hope you were as intrigued by this stove as I am. In the next video, part two of this two part series, we'll be doing the initial burning, and hopefully, the stove will not disappoint. I will be putting a link to that video in the description of this one in case you have difficulty finding it, and I look forward to seeing you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, please share, and consider subscribing if you aren't already. And if you do subscribe, click the bell icon and it will let you know when the next video drops. Hope to see you soon. Have a good one.